Oh, we had no idea what was in store for us back then on that night. <laughs> now let's take a look back at some things we've experienced all over the world in 2020, most of which we didn't see coming. New South Wales declares state of emergency over their brush fires. Ukrainian plane crash in Tehran kills 176 people. Prince Harry and Meghan step back from their senior roles as royals in the UK. The Sultan of Amman dies. A volcano erupts in the Philippines. Kobe Bryant dies in a chopper crash along with his daughter Gianna. The WHO declares coronavirus as a global health emergency. The UK formally withdraws from the EU. Massive riots in India's capital break out. Luxembourg becomes the first to make public transportation free. COVID-19 outbreak officially labeled as a pandemic. The Summer Olympics is canceled. Nova Scotia shooter kills 22 people. Oil prices hit record lows in the U.S. A cyclone devastates eastern India and Bangladesh, killing 130 people. A plane crash kills 97 people in Pakistan. George Floyd dies in police custody, leading to global protests around the world. Costa Rica becomes the first Central American nation to legalize same-sex marriage. China votes for Hong Kong security legislation. NASA SpaceX's Launch America takes off. Google sued for $5 billion over private mode tracking. Russia announces a state of emergency over a massive oil spill. New Zealand declared COVID-19 free. We lost a hero when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died at the age of 87. And what has this year taught all of us? Hey guys, it's Alessia over on Alessia's Leaves on YouTube and Instagram. I think this year has been absolutely, absolutely wackadoodle, and I really hope that everybody's doing okay out there, because I know that this one has been rough, but I do know that this year has probably taught us a whole lot more than the years prior to it. I think that the most important lesson that I learned this year is that time is ultra, ultra, ultra limited, and we have to really make sure that we're using it on things that we actually value, whether it be on our houseplants, uh, because I know that our houseplants keep us happy, make sure that we are doing some self-care and to make sure that we're keeping a well mind. I love them. We all love them, I'm sure. We have to make sure that we're using the time on things that we value, whether it be that or just sort of hanging out with friends and family and being surrounded by people who we actually care about and who actually care about us. I think that that's the most important thing that we've learned. I'm just hoping and praying now that next year is going to be so much better than this year. But even if it's not, at least we've learned some things, right? Happy New Year. Hello, everyone. I'm Becca from Becca De La Plant or De La Plants on Instagram. 2020 has taught me a lot of things, but probably the number one thing is that life is a lot more pleasant when you ease up your grip and just let things come and go as they may. So someone told me this a couple of years ago, and it was in a time in my life where I was also having a lot of issues with trying to control everything and not being able to control everything. When these situations occur, when I don't have control, I kind of freak out because I like to feel like I'm in control, don't we all? <laughs> So someone told me that if you were to hold your hand open and you put sand in your hand, or you put really anything in your hand that was um, not a solid object, <laughs> and you squeeze your hand, a lot of it is gonna fall out and you're not gonna be able to grip onto all of it. But you're so much better able to hold on to, uh, to every little piece of that sand if you just keep your hand open-handed. Life is a lot easier when you just hold out your hands open-handedly and you don't try to like hold on to every little thing and grip onto every little thing and try to control every little thing when you just let things like happen and let the chips fall where they may life is a lot more pleasant so if you know that movie reference i love you and um thank you so much for including me in this nicole hi my clean leaves fam my name is pamela and you can find me on instagram at houseplant h-a-u-z p-l-a-n-t or here on youtube at pamela p which is my name p-a-m-e-l-l-a-2-l-z-s-p 
last name. So one thing that I learned this year, my gosh, one of the many, 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 many lessons that I learned this year is that manifestation definitely works, but manifestation does not work without you also putting in a bit of work. Actually, not even a bit of work, a lot of work. I'm a big, big, big advocate of manifestation. I'm a big believer in speaking it into existence and putting it out there into the world and then having to actually work and attain what you you want but it's gonna happen but not without a little bit of work so one lesson that I have learned is you can want something all you want but without you working hard for it without you putting out there in your universe nothing is gonna happen okay nothing is gonna happen so I hope that you all can you know take this little lesson from me Miss Lola <laughs> And do you want to tell my Cleves Leaves fam what you learned this year? What did you manifest this year? What are your life lessons? Her life lesson is that maybe we should work out a little bit every day or else we're going to become chubma gumps forever and ever. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to say happy holidays and happy, happy new year to you all. Bye. Hey everybody, my name is Logan from Plant Talk with Logan. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube under the same name. 2020 taught me a lot of lessons. I learned a lot in 2020. Last year, just recently started to accept myself. I came out of the closet um, when I met my wonderful boyfriend. This year, I really decided to deal with that head on. Well, not deal with it. I decided to learn a lot about myself head on. I started going to therapy. I started to love myself. You know, I started to accept all of the things that I did not want to accept at one point in my life and it has been a very freeing year for me in this little noggin. <laughs> I had a lot of time to think and reflect and learn while I was, you know, cooped up in my house working all day long every day. <laughs> I also learned how to deal with a thrips outbreak and not kill all my plants. <laughs> <laughs> so that was another really great journey for me this year. I know how to control the pests. I hope everyone has a safe and happy 2021. And um, yeah, cheers. G'day to the My Clean Leaves family. My name is Kathy, and my YouTube channel is called Kathy's Projects. Thank you so very much, Nicole, for inviting me to be a part of this collaboration. I really do appreciate it. And I think it is an excellent idea. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned this year is that I can still surprise myself, which I must admit, I didn't think was possible, given that I'm in my 50s. If you had told me 12 months ago that I would have a YouTube channel. I would have laughed, and yet here we are. That has been a very valuable lesson for me, that life can still surprise me, that I can still surprise me, that my life may go in a direction that I hadn't anticipated, that it is still an unwritten book. That is what I find wonderful and fascinating about life. And what makes me want to get up every morning is not knowing what surprise awaits me. Of course, there are sometimes negative surprises, but that is part and parcel of living. And we have to take joy in those things that do make us happy, even when life can look very grim. And the second thing I've learned is that I am addicted to Adam from Not Dudes Hats, and I want more. <laughs> Again, thank you so very much to the wonderful Nicole for inviting me to be a part of this collaboration. Love you, girl. And to all of you, I wish you a very happy and safe new year. I'm sure that 2021 will be a big improvement on 2020. I will see you all in the new year. Bye. Hello friends, my name is Adam from the channel Not Dude, K-N-O-T, and that's because I used to tie macrame, so that's where the knot came from. Nicole asked me to be a part of her 2020 video on lessons learned, so I thought I would sit down and share with you a few lessons that I learned in 2020. 2020 has been a difficult year. It's not a surprise, and it's been a difficult year for every single person, I can imagine. I think 2020 has been a year of growth. It's been a year of empathy. There's been a lot that's been revealed this year, a lot of selfishness, a lot of injustices in this world, in our country, in the United States especially. So 2020 has been a rough one, but there's been good in this year. And today I wanted to share with you a few lessons that I've learned in 2020. Not necessarily that I've just learned them this year, but this year kind of solidified the those lessons for me. And the first one is being that you 
choose who you want in your family. Growing up in the United States, we're always faced with this idiom of blood is thicker than water and family is everything, and it's not true. I think this year has shed a lot of light on the differences, especially me personally, between myself and my family. We have different ideologies, we have different political views, we have different experiences, and that's okay, but it's it's been difficult. It's been a year of growth, and growing sometimes is hard, but necessary. And this year I'm thankful for those people around me, my good friends and the community that I have, that they are my family. And kind of understanding that in my head has helped a lot in all of the struggles of this year. So if you're out there and you are in the same position, I just want to say that I'm sorry you have to go through all of that. But in the end, I think you will be happier knowing that family isn't just relation and that you have a group of people around you, I'm sure, that you can consider family and that love you and that support you and that will do anything for you regardless. So take time and appreciate those people in your life that are like that and develop your own family and pour your efforts and time into those people who will pour their effort and time back into you. Another lesson that I've learned in 2020 is just to appreciate the small moments, the moments that are fleeting but that are joyful, to focus on those and to appreciate those moments and those people in your life that bring you that joy and that love because our brains can easily go down this alleyway of what ifs and anxieties and it's helped me a lot this year to stop when I'm feeling those anxieties and those like what if situations to stop to pull myself back into the moment that is now and to think about the good that has happened think about the positive things that have happened and to keep working on the things that you want to change. I can so easily focus on all the negative things and they're just right at the forefront of my brain and they can come to just like that. So it's been helpful for me to try to retrain my brain, although I'm not the best at it, but retrain my brain to look at those positive things and look at those happy, joyful things, those things that are good instead of focusing on the what ifs and what could happen. So that's the few lessons lessons that I've learned in 2020. I mean, there's a bunch more, but I don't want this video to be super long. And thank you so much, Nicole, for inviting me on your channel to give you my lessons from 2020. And for all of you watching, what I wish for you in the new year is happiness, health, and love. Thank you. And cheers to 2021. Hello, Nicole's viewers. I'm Pam from Pam's Pretty Plants. And Nicole asked me to tell you guys what I have learned, my big takeaway from 2020. And I'll tell you, I have spent about a week and a half uh, having no idea. How does one narrow 2020 down to one lesson? I thought about it basically all day for several days. I thought and I thought. I meditated on it. Your body's saying, fuck that. I drank about it. But eventually, it hit me. We take you to Capitol Hill where lawmakers will vote to give Americans half of what they received in the last stimulus package. My big takeaway from this year is these rich people gotta go. This is not a new revelation to me, but I think that the real takeaway from this year, from every problem and every corner of this that I can look at, it all comes back to the fact that the upper class are perfectly happy sacrificing the rest of us. Uh, we can all just die and they don't care. Please tell me why we are not being paid to stay home long enough to get our numbers down. Oh, that's right, because rich people don't like that idea. Doesn't matter that we outnumber them like a bazillion to one. No, 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 they get to just hoard wealth and hoard wealth and hoard wealth. Basically never paying any taxes, which, you know, would easily fund so many programs that would help, I don't know, the rest of us. But none of us got a pot to piss in. Why is that? We have rich people running both parties in our government right now, and um, yeah, they don't seem to care either. Yeah, none of them care. Um, they're supposed to represent us. Do you feel represented? So yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I've taken away from 2020. Okay, bye!
Bye! Hi plant friends! I am Maria, the plant killer turned plant lady behind the Bloom and Grow radio podcast and now the Bloom and Grow YouTube show. One thing that I learned this year in 2020 is man, garden life parallels can be so freaking helpful. 2020 was a crazy year for everyone, <laughs> our whole world, especially our country, but for me, you know, I lost a job, I had to reschedule the wedding that I had planned, I had to, we gave up our apartment, we moved, I mean it was a total 180 and I just kept saying to myself, we're pruning, we're pruning, we're pruning back, this is okay, this is natural, it's gonna happen and there's gonna be beautiful growth that comes forth after and it's just been something I've really meditated on all year and I'm so thankful that I have this plant care practice and hobby to have fueled and educated these other aspects of my life. So very thankful, we pruned a little bit and man oh man I'm so excited to see what growth comes forth in 2021 for me but also our greater plant community and the world at large. So happy new year everyone. Hey guys what's going on? My name is Christian and you can usually find me walking through the aisles of plant nurseries or spending my Sunday afternoons having picnics in a botanical garden under a bird of paradise. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, you can find me on Instagram or YouTube, Crazy Plant Guy. And the lesson I learned in 2020 isn't necessarily a new one for me or for anyone out there, but it was definitely a good reminder to not be afraid to push myself and continue to go outside my comfort zone. And I really did apply a lot of that in many aspects of my life, whether that was in my career to courageously step down from something that was so comfortable and secured and trying something different to even experimenting with different methods of plant care and propagation like using sphagnum moss as a growing medium which I used to be afraid of doing and now I feel so comfortable doing it to even challenging myself creatively through my videos and my content like these skits I've been doing which I'm actually finding out right now that I enjoy and love to do so yeah that's kind of what I learned in 2020 with that said I want to wish you and your family a safe and happy new year and all the best in 2021 hi am I like the 80th person that you're seeing today Today. My name is Sharina, Sharina Talata here on YouTube and on Instagram and I have really been thinking about this topic so much. A lot of things came up for me. I wrote it down, I made a little script, but I'm throwing all of that away. So it's kind of like in the movies where someone comes up with a speech written out and they throw it away. Oops. Sorry. Yes, this has been a hard year, but one thing that I think really helped me out, a lesson that really helped me out was from a quote that I've lived by for a really long time. I don't know. I don't know how you'll feel about this. It could be corny. It could be not something, not for you, and that's okay, but the quote is, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. And it's how funny that I just I just had that, right? I have this quote and I look at it all the time for all those days that I wish things would just stop. We would just, you know, get back to normal or things would just get easier. And I realized, I don't wanna get emotional. So this quote is something that I've lived by for a very long time because Yes, we want things to get back to normal. We want things to just be easy. Everything that's happening right now is happening for us. And though we might not even see it yet, but looking back, these are the days that'll make us better, that have made us stronger. I should really end this before I start crying. So, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better is a quote that I love. I hope this helped. Nicole, Michaeline Leaves, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. And, um, oh yeah, what's coming? Coming up, New Year. I'll be home. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy it. Happy New Year to you, your family, and your plants. Duh. <laughs> Bye. Hi everybody, my name is Moira Probilar. I am from South Africa, Johannesburg. I live in Santen and my YouTube channel is Bring Life Indoors. You can also find me on Instagram at Bring Life In. I also have a Facebook page, Bring Life Indoors. It's all about plants. <laughs> For me, what I've learned in this year, 2020, with COVID happening, <laughs> is I learned to appreciate what I have even more. Not that I didn't appreciate it before, but I learned to appreciate it even more. I learned to cherish it even more. I learned to uh, uh, love it even more and to be okay and content with what I have and not wanting more. You talk about plants. I learned to love what I have. I learned to to, to, to be okay with the plants I have and love them even more and appreciate them and consider the fact that I was not able to go to the shops, I was not able to go and bring in anything and buy anything. So that taught me to 
love what I have even more and appreciate it even more and to be okay with the plants I have and, and even when the shops were open where we can go buy now I'm buying with a different mindset altogether I'm not bringing a plant home because I feel like it I bring it home because it's a plant I love and I would like to add it to the collection I have but not because I'm not okay with what I have I'm, 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 I'm okay with what I have and that's the greatest lesson I feel we can learn. May you have a beautiful, beautiful new year, a happy new year. I wish you a prosperous 2021. Hello, I'm Rose from Yoga and Plant with Rose here on YouTube and both Yoga with Rose and Plant with Rose on Instagram. And you spell my name R-O-O-S. I am Dutch and that is the way we spell Rose. I can't help it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nicole, for inviting me to join this awesome video. I love this idea. And the lesson that I learned in 2020 is that it's fine to be enthusiastic and joyful and impulsive, but to take a moment to assess and think before you jump in. If you follow my channel, you may have seen this already. In April, I bought amazing plants for a friend, pink princesses and Hoyas and just so many cool plants. I was so excited that on the way back to bring the cart back to where I belonged, to express my joy by pushing the cart and then jumping up on it like a kid, you know, how you can ride the cart on your hips without checking if the cart was actually able to do that. And it wasn't. <laughs> so I'm laughing now, but I fell really hard. I had a big gash in my forehead, three stitches. And even today, eight months later, I still have concussion sy symptoms. It lasted so much longer than that one moment where I just wanted to express my joy about those plants. So my lesson is to take a moment and I think most people actually already do this. I might be one of the only ones that doesn't. Hello ADHD, thank you so much. I do really still appreciate my own joyfulness and enthusiasm and I hope that you have that too, but that together we can just make sure that we stay safe and we protect our beautiful bodies because they are amazing, but they don't wanna be smashed on the ground with an iron cart flying into your forehead. Thanks so much, Nicole, again, for having me. And to you all, I wish you a super amazing, planty, and safe. Happy New Year. Hi guys, my name is Ashley from Planting the World Red on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And Nicole asked me to talk about what I learned in 2020. This year has been a wild ride to say the complete least. We've all had to pivot in some way or another in our lives. And you know, that can create difficulties. Trying to navigate what to do, where to go, what to do now. Something that stands out to me is pre-pandemic times, we had this persona, let's say. It was kind of an unspoken thing that we had to always go. Our productivity levels had to be at an all-time high at all times. We glorified staying up all night working or working on something and that's just not healthy. So take it one day at a time. Go at the pace that is good for you. And you know, if you're probably watching this, you're probably growing plants. Plants grow at the pace that they're going to grow. They don't put limitations on themselves like I have to have three leaves by the end of September. No, they just grow. I feel that we are the same in some aspects. What I've learned is to not put these hard goals on ourselves. What I've learned is we're gonna grow anyways, in spite of. Keep going, keep doing what you're doing, and you'll get to where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. You may have a goal of three months to get this done, but it may take six months, but you got it done, and you got there in a healthy way. So from now on, though I am going to be productive, I've learned that I have to have a healthy pace of productivity, but also making sure that you sleep and you rest because that is what you need for your energy and to be able to keep on keeping on. So I hope this gave you a little insight and I hope you take a little bit of my advice. You'll grow, you'll reach your goals. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Don't put such hard expectations on yourself. I will see you in 2021. Happy New Year! 
Hey everyone, my name is Taylor or Plant Dust Woman and wow, what a year 2020 was. I started this year with a really negative mindset. As soon as the pandemic started, I just assumed it was gonna be a bad or unsuccessful year. And I think the biggest lesson that I learned this year is that I am capable of so much more than I give myself credit for. We as a whole are capable of so much more than we think that we are. I own a small business that was heavily impacted by the pandemic and my nine to five job was considered essential in my state. So I worked the whole year and this year there were many obstacles but at the end of it I'm proud of how it turned out I started a YouTube channel I did so many things out of my comfort zone this year and it just gets me thinking if I can do all of these things in a year like 2020 what can I do on a normal year you know I think that when you're faced with adversity you can either give up and just assume just allow the outcome that you think should be or you can push and work harder and create a better outcome for yourself so that was definitely my biggest takeaway of this year is to not limit myself also i learned that spider mites totally suck <laughs> i hope that you guys had a wonderful holiday season and i hope that you have an even better 2021 thanks Hey Nicole, thank you so much for including me in your video today. And to all of Nicole's subscribers, if you don't know me, my name is Cheyenne over at Plant My Happy Space. I have a YouTube and an Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'd really appreciate it. I love talking to new people. And what I really wanna to touch on today is what I learned in 2020 is to really, I can't control everything. I've always been a very controlling person. And if I don't have control, I do a lot of work and a lot of effort to kind of make what I want to be happen. As many of us have probably learned in the year of 2020, a lot of things are gonna happen that are out of our control. We can't control the environment, we can't control people's actions, we can't control what people think or how they act. A lot of the times it can be very frustrating. In our opinion, we know the right way to act, we know the right decision make, we know what should be done, at least, you know, most of us think we know. You can't control all the people and their actions and their thoughts and their intentions. I just had to take a step back and realize I can only control myself. I can only better my life. I can only better the lives around me by what my actions and my thoughts and what I do. I cannot force it onto other people. If they don't wanna grow, if they don't wanna help themselves, if they don't wanna help others, I can only do so much. As much as I believe, you know, educating other people and informing them and helping them become better people and make better decisions is important, I can't let it affect my day on a day-to-day -day basis. I can't let it bring me down and it used to bring me down a lot. It used to very much frustrate me when people did not act and behave the way I thought a correct person should act and behave. You know, you just have to take a step back and let what you have control in be something you work on and if you don't have control then just let it go and it's something that I never really took seriously until this year of truly being tested on I cannot control everything and everyone and every disease and every person's actions and every hateful thing that's said about people I cannot change any of it all I can do is better myself better the people around me and try to educate people, but I cannot get frustrated when they don't want to learn. And I know that was a little bit ranty for this kind of a video, so I hope that, that didn't totally bring down the mood, guys. Hopefully you guys come and check me out on my channel because I promise you I'm a lot more bubbly than this little rant tells you about me. Let's talk about choices. G'day, Nicole. G'day, everyone else. And my name is Scott. I'm from Scott Grows and Avocado Tree, the channel in which I'm aiming to grow an avocado tree from seed to the point of bearing fruit whilst documenting the process. And along the way, I'll talk about other plant stuff, things that I'm learning, things that I'm excited about, and just we have a good time. And today I want to talk about choices. Because choices are something that I've been thinking a lot about this year. The choices that we make always have consequences, and many of them, we won't see those consequences immediately. Let's look at houseplants for example. I choose to bring a houseplant home. Then, am I going to leave it? Oh, no, I need to continue to make choices in order to care for it. Care for it. I need to choose to water it. I need to choose to water it at an appropriate time so that we don't get root rot or any of those issues. If I don't choose to wait long enough or if I don't choose to water it, over time it's going to die. Likewise, if I don't fertilize, if I'm not looking for when it's root bound, if I'm not giving it adequate sunlight, lots of consequences for things in our houseplant lives. We need to make good choices. And I think that's a big aspect of life this year. And a lot of us have seen the results of our choices as we have had different routines, many of us, or as we've navigated this unusual situation many of us find ourselves in. For me in my life, I had two periods of time working from home. There was a break in the middle where in my state, things were returning back to normal, but then we had to pull it back because of the pandemic again. And the first time 
I did not make great choices for myself. I wasn't exercising as often as I should have. I wasn't getting dressed properly for work. I was just kind of in very, very casual clothes. I would just kind of be in those clothes all day. And it was okay for a couple of weeks, but over a couple of months, those choices really impacted my mental health. So when I came back, I learned from those choices and then I made an effort to make better choices. So, you know, make, making an effort to have exercise, getting changed, making sure that there was a very clear distinction between work time and non-work time, and I had much better mental health outcomes as a result. The choices we make don't just affect us, but the people around us as well. And I think we need to be really cautious of that going forward, not just, you know, in this time of the pandemic where there are very practical things that we need to be doing, making good choices, wearing masks, socially distancing, where that is necessary, to be able to protect not just us, but the people around us, our community, and nations. And so going forward beyond the year of the pandemic, I want to be thinking, what choices am I making to positively impact my life and also positively impact those around me, the world around me? Where am I having a negative impact? I want to make good choices. Nicole, thanks so much for having me. I tried to keep this one short. I've been thinking a lot about this one. Making good choices, something I'm thinking a lot about. Thanks very much for having me, guys. I'm Scott from Scott Grows and Avocado Tree, and it's been a pleasure to be here. Hey, what's going on, folks? My name is Gerard. I am an exotic plant collector, and I also have a YouTube channel where you can find me at Gerard's Horticulture Culture. My channel, I'm just documenting the progress that I'm having with all of my plants in my plant collection, my propagations, my research, my mistakes. Yes, I make a lot of mistakes with naming plants, saying the wrong plants. I make tons of mistakes. Most of you real true to the game botanists will really pick out some of the mistakes mistakes that I sprinkle in some of my videos. Please forgive me, I am learning. And that's what I wanna say. The 2020 lessons that I've learned is just to keep making mistakes because they are our biggest teachers. With everything going on outside COVID, the presidential debates, the only real thing you can do is really invest in yourself. And that's what I have learned from plants. Plants are growing, I'm trying to make them grow. They basically inspire me to grow. That's one thing I've learned is just to keep going, keep growing, and keep doing whatever you're doing. Plants have taken me to YouTube, and I'm learning video editing, I'm learning photography, and who knows what else is next. So, Nicole, thank you for this experience with the collab, and as always, keep growing. Hey everyone, I'm Allie from Allie's Plants. You can find me here on YouTube at Allie's Plants or on Instagram also at Allie's Plants. And I am obviously here to share with you the top lesson I've learned in the year 2020. For me, it's one of two things. The one is just to be patient with myself because sometimes my brain likes to tell me that everyone deserves a break except myself. So it's to be patient with myself. But the main thing is that productivity is not attached to or equal to worth. I don't have to constantly be doing and earning and creating and achieving and whatever verb you could put in there to be worth something. I can be worth something sitting on the couch for three hours watching a TV show as I am when I am up and cleaning or making YouTube videos or whatever. I've learned that I am important, that I am valuable, that I am worth something regardless of if I'm doing good or bad in life or if I'm achieving or not achieving or earning or not earning. I and you, everyone watching this, is valuable and worthy of every single good thing regardless of how your life is going. Even if it's the worst day, worst week, worst year of your life, you are worth something. This is to myself as well. I am worth something and you are worth something regardless of what's going on in our life. Thank you to Nicole for starting this collab and for inviting me to be part of it. I hope you guys had great holidays and the happiest new year. Bye everyone. Hi there, my name is Nikki and I am from Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And first of all, I would like to say thank you to Nicole so much for having us all here to talk to you guys about what we learned in 2020. Now, this is absolutely gonna be different for everybody, especially this year, things have been so insane. But for me personally, 2020 was, I think, a year of just a lot of personal growth and really figuring out who I was. I think going along with that, the one thing that I learned in 2020 that was most important 
important and most valuable to me is just to be myself. I spent so many years of my life trying to please other people and dull myself down so that I would be more accepted or feel more accepted. And what I learned more so this year than any other was just that it's okay to be myself. Uh, just, you know, authentic and unapologetically me and who I am. You know, I don't strive to be everybody's cup of tea and that's fine. You know, everybody is different and everybody likes certain things or certain flavors or certain beverages. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, but just this world would be such a boring place if everybody liked the same thing. I have just gotten more comfortable in my skin and been able to open up a lot more. Uh, I am now to the point where sometimes I go on camera without my makeup even. <laughs> last year or a year ago, that would never have happened. I really do have to thank the plant community subscribers and my fellow plant tubers for creating a space that enables me to just be myself. So thank you guys so much for that. And again, thank you, Nicole, for having us here. And I want everybody to go out there and just be unapologetically who you are because that's what's most beautiful. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miro and I have a channel here on YouTube called Basie Plants where I talk about, well, mostly Hoyas. I may have a problem. You can also find me on Instagram at basie.plants. Personally, I'm someone who doesn't reflect too much, not because of lack of gratitude or because I didn't learn anything, but simply because it's not something that I made a habit of and possibly because it's slightly out of my comfort zone. All of that said, I do think that this year has been a lesson in understanding. Now, I do realize this is a bit of a commonplace thing to say, Maybe sometimes it's not so bad to start with those. At least it's where we feel most comfortable, right? I think that we all understood this year has highlighted a lot of the issues that we have lost sight of and that there are many more that we need to overcome. I also think we understood there are many people who are and remain oblivious to these issues, but that there are many more people who are becoming aware of them. I also understood myself a bit better this year and I learned that I'm much more capable, resilient and patient than I thought I was. And there is a never bad time for that. I also understood I need many more Hoyas. For example, variegated Hoya Hirschkeliana. I guess we could quote Caitlyn Jenner here and say that the year 2020 has been a year of realizing stuff. Have Hoyalicious holidays and Happy New Year! Happy New Year. Wow, that was a mouthful of lessons learned in 2020. As I was editing this video, I was thinking, man, everyone came with such great lessons. What am I gonna talk about? I think the one thing out of many, many lessons learned in 2020 is that nothing is promised. Not our time here on Earth, not our jobs, not our careers, nothing is promised to us. A lot of you guys know that my husband and I have a wedding photography company. And when we first started that company, we had this mindset of everyone's gonna continue to get married. Like mar marriage isn't gonna stop ever. Like people will always need a photographer. And 2020 just came along and was like, <laughs> Nope. So we took a really big hit this year, but what I learned is that some things are just not in our control and our job wasn't promised to us. It may be there tomorrow in 2021, God willing. I know some people that lost some loved ones from COVID this past year and otherwise healthy individuals. And again, life isn't promised. So being that a lesson learned, I am learning to take each day as they come, to be thankful that I'm able to wake up, to be thankful I have my family, to be thankful I have the roof over our heads for as long as we do, and to be thankful that there is hope for the future. Hopefully, 2021 will bring us a little bit more stability. Guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. It was some time to put together, but these creators are absolutely incredible human beings. We came together from six different countries to do this, so I thought that it was just so much fun. If you have time and you haven't already, please go check out each one of these creators individually. All the links to their YouTube channel channels and to their Instagram pages will be linked in the description below. And if you're watching and you're here from one of the creators in this video, hello, I'm Nicole and you can find me here. Consider subscribing.
striving. And I hope you guys all have a very healthy, happy, and prosperous 2021. Happy New Year.